Okay. So uh, welcome everybody to uh, a session on how to build a lemonade stand in a SharePoint BI portal. Uh, as Julie uh, mentioned, I'm doing uh, a number of business intelligence projects in Queensland at the moment. However, I am uh, transmitting from Chinatown in Sydney. I'm absolutely loving it. Um, I do uh, blog regularly about my victories and my challenges on uh, popbi.com and today's session uh, really uh, was an idea I came up with uh, when working at a large government um, project and SharePoint was the shop front for a number of uh, SQL Server reporting services reports reaching a few thousand users um, embedded inside a SharePoint portal. So I realized uh, that it wasn't just important for the reports to have the right look and feel, but the look and feel of the actual portal itself became a big issue um, over the course of the project. So I guess the purpose of this session today is to uh, present how to uh, customise your SharePoint BI portals um, to make it an attractive shop front uh, for your reports, an attractive place to visit for your, uh, for your customers, the people you're selling your lemonade to, so to speak. Uh, so further, what we're going to cover today is how to customise your BI sites, um, how to add dynamic content such as uh, videos or YouTubes, uh, how to embed social media. So we're going to look at a couple of different ways to embed uh, Twitter content. Uh, but most importantly, we're going to do it without touching the SharePoint designer and so uh, no master pages or CSS. And there's a, there's a reason for that, which I'll get into a little bit later. So firstly, just on uh, SharePoint and Lemonade, um, first of all, Lemonade branding, it's not just about lemons, water and ice. There's a whole heap of different components uh, that come together uh, to give our customers uh, the experience that we're looking for when we're selling our lemonade and, and they're, they're coming to our lemonade stand. Likewise with uh, SharePoint, um, in terms of the portal, there's a number of different components uh, that come together um, to bring that uh, UI experience uh, to the users who are visiting our portal and uh, running those reports. So the, the ones to, uh, to mention, I guess, uh, more specifically for today's presentation. So we start at the top uh, left, you'll see there's a site actions menu. So this is the main menu for interacting with um, SharePoint and that's what we'll be using to uh, customise our SharePoint BI portal. Um, the second major component there, if we have a look just down from the site actions, you will see the title logo. So we'll be customising that logo today to make it look a little bit more like a lemonade stand. Uh, if we just go one down further, you'll see item K and this is the global navigation bar. So as we create uh, site collections, so a primary site and a number of sub-sites, uh, we can customise uh, the links to our portal through the global navigation bar, so that's item K. Now if we continue down, uh, item N is the quick launch, so this is a, a menu system if you like for uh, customising access to our portal. And in the middle we have item R which is the body area. So this is where we'll be customising uh, our web pages themselves, so the building blocks for our portal. Uh, so that's the, uh, that's the, main, uh, the main components I guess that, that we're going to focus on today. And there's a URL there for uh, reading more about it. So social media we'll be looking at uh, a number of ways uh, to basically um, enhance our lemonade stand to bring our customers to our SharePoint portal using our Twitter integration. So we'll be looking at Twitter widgets, we'll be embedding our timeline into our web page, we'll be looking at our Twitter apps which are a little bit more of a rich um, uh, customised uh, Twitter experience. 
and we're looking at Twitter buttons, so how to embed a follow me button on our SharePoint BI portal. We'll also be looking at how to embed uh, videos, so YouTube content. We'll be looking at how to add and remove uh, BI sites, so there's a, a two main sites that we will be dealing with and that is the uh, Business Intelligence Centre which is based around Performance Point and the Power Pivot Team site. And we'll be looking at how to set navigation up for those two sites, how to customise the titles and the logos. We'll be looking at techniques around editing pages. So the first thing we'll be doing is turning off version control which will enhance our uh, development lines uh, quite significantly when we're working in a, a dev environment by ourselves. We'll also be looking at page layout options and how to edit HTML in our web pages and also in a number of web parts. Uh, in terms of the web parts themselves, we'll be looking at a number of different uh, web parts today. So the first is uh, the content editor web part HTML forms, SQL Server reporting services, and we'll be looking at a custom web part as well called SPS Display Tweets, which is from CodePlex. So we'll also be looking at how to customize uh, the properties of your web part and then export that web part so it becomes a reusable um, item in itself. We'll be looking at managing content and structure. Uh, so we'll be looking at uh, document library customizations, content types, and how to move files around in our SharePoint BI portal. Uh, we will look at uh, site security briefly, and we'll look at some of the options around uh, site analytics or site statistics. So looking at uh, techniques for viewing who's looking at our, our reporting services reports, uh, but also who's looking at our web pages within our SharePoint. BI portal. Uh, SharePoint 2010 is the basis for today's presentation. However, I'll allude to some of the uh, theme changes in SharePoint 2013. So as a, an understanding of SharePoint 2010, we can then apply those same techniques over to SharePoint uh, 2013. And there's, some, uh, there's a few different ways in which uh, the SharePoint 2010 uh, uh, differs from the SharePoint 2013 UI. Uh, one of those is the uh, the App Store and uh, the terminology around an app. So in SharePoint 2010, when we create a subsite in SharePoint 2013, we call that subsite an app. Uh, there's a couple of different uh, ways that SharePoint apps are hosted in the App Store, and that is um, uh, quite a different uh, departure from how things operate in SharePoint 2010. And uh, there is a few self-service links which uh, I've made available here for, um, for, for example, the custom uh, SPS display tweets web part, uh, some of the resources around Twitter and branding, and the self-service BI navigation menu, which I'll show you uh, in a second. Uh, when we finish, uh, it is always be a clock somewhere in the world, so I believe that would be about California right now. And what I'll do now is jump straight into the demonstration. Okay, so uh, here is the Lemonade Stand site. Now, uh, this is the ready-made site, of course, and the reason I'm putting this up is so that I can show you how to delete it. So here we have a primary site and a sub-site. And so the first thing we're going to do is delete that sub-site. So we go to Site Actions, Site Settings, and delete this site. Delete. Okay. And then we'll go back to our primary site. Site Actions, Site Settings, delete this site. Okay. Now we're going to create this site uh, from scratch. So here is our main portal. Now this is the default uh, that has been set up for this SharePoint um, BI farm. 
But what we're going to do is go into SharePoint Central Administration and we're going to create a new site collection. We're going to call this site collection Z's, which is the name of the, the kid building the lemonade stand. And we can optionally give that site a description and we can set the URL for that site. Now down here we can select a site template. Now the two main templates that we would work with in a BI project are typically the SharePoint Business Intelligence Center which is based around our performance point dashboards and the Power Pivot site. So first we will create the site and we'll specify a site collection administrator. And we'll click OK. That's going to take approximately 10 seconds or so. And that will create the primary site in our site collection, which is a performance point business intelligence center. And we'll just wait for that to process and then we will create a subsite. Now the way the subsites work in our SharePoint uh, BI farm is we can create a number of subsites underneath our main site. So if we click on our main site called Z's, you can go to site actions, more options. site and specify our subsite as a power pivot site which we will call analysis. Under more options uh, we can specify a description, uh, a URL name, uh, inherit permissions from the parent site and we can decide whether uh, the global navigation works seamlessly uh, uh, no matter if we're clicking on the parent site or the sub site. So I'm going to say use the same uh, global navigation uh, top link bar from the parent site. So again, that'll take a few seconds. Now we don't have a site that I've prepared earlier. I do have a few widgets that I prepared uh, for this demonstration. So what I'm going to do now is add a number, number of these supporting libraries and widgets that I need uh, to add content to the SharePoint BI portal. So we're going to go to Site Actions, More Options. We're going to set, select Library. We're going to add a picture library for storing our site logos. We're going to click on more options. Again, we can specify a description. Uh, we can choose whether we automatically add a link in our quick launch bar. And we can specify whether we want to turn on version control for this particular uh, document library, which we'll say no. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add the pictures that I need to build this site. So under logos, I have a picture called Lemonade that I'll be using in one of my pages and also have a picture called Lemonade Logo, which we'll be using as the site logo. Okay, there it is. Okay. So here's our subsite. Now we're going to go to Site Actions, More Options, Library, 
and we're going to add a document library for storing our reporting services reports. So we're going to call that reports. More options. We can specify a description, again uh, add a link to the quick, quick launch bar and we can create our switch on version control uh, here, but we're going to specify no. And we can decide which content type becomes a default for this particular library. We're going to leave that as Excel spreadsheet and click OK. Now we need to add a couple of uh, reporting services items into this library. So we can do that in two ways. We can click on documents and upload document. Or if we have a number of different uh, files to upload, which we do here, we have two. We can click on library. We can uh, open our SharePoint document library in Windows Explorer like so. Here we can go and pick up our reporting services files. and drop them into our document library using Windows Explorer, which is a little bit easier than managing the SharePoint UI. If we come back to our document library and browse, see the two reporting services items in there and we can click on the report just to make sure it works. Uh, right, okay. So what we haven't done is uh, customize the content types. We're going to go into library and library settings. I'm going to go into an advanced settings. We're going to switch on management of content types. Click OK. We're going to scroll down, we're going to add our reporting services content types. Okay, there they are. Okay, now we have our BI site templates created and we're going to start customizing our sites by specifying a site title and logo. Okay, so in our sub site we're going to go to site actions, site settings, and under look and feel we're going to select site description and icon. So here we can customize uh, the site title, which I might make that a capital. Uh, we can specify a description. And we can specify the URL for the logo that we uploaded earlier. So if we come down to images, we'll see the URL for our lemonade stand logo right here. So again, site actions, site settings, title description and icon. We can change the title, specify the URL for our logo, and click OK. So here we have a logo for our site and we've customised the title by changing uh, that to a capital. OK, so the next thing we're going to do is add a uh, self-service uh, BI navigation menu uh, for our users to access Report Builder and also uh, the Performance Point Dashboard Designer. So we click on Analysis, under Site Actions, Site Settings, we'll see under Look and Feel we find Navigation. Okay, so this navigation here controls uh, what we see on the left-hand side of our screen. So here we're going to add a heading called self-service. And we're not going to specify a URL because it's just a heading. And then we can customise the position of that particular heading by moving it up or down. In this case, we're going to move it up to the top. 
we're going to add a link which is our Report Builder 3 application. Now you may have to do a bit of digging around uh, to find this on your own SharePoint BI portal, but as a guide, it would be based on something like this. Click OK. We're going to add our link to our performance point dashboard designer. Now again, uh, the URL will be based around something like this in your own SharePoint BI portal. We're going to click OK. So now we've created uh, our self-service uh, tools inside the Quick Launch menu to make them easy to find. Now, the most important thing here is we have to click OK, otherwise uh, SharePoint uh, disregards the customizations we've made to our quick launch. So down here on the quick launch you'll see we've added uh, a self-service uh, BI menu for launching Report Builder 3 and Dashboard Designer. So I'm going to go and launch uh, Report Builder 3. Okay, there we go. And then I'm going to la launch uh, Dashboard Designer. Okay, so now that that's working, we're going to set about editing our web pages. Uh, but the first thing we're going to do is turn off uh, version control. Go to library settings, versioning settings. We'll see here that we can switch off versioning and optionally switch off uh, whether documents require checkout before editing. So that is currently set to no anyway. So this means we can edit content uh, uh, without versioning and without checking in and checking out. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is click on our subsite. Now we're going to completely blow away the content for this site. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is demonstrate um, how to embed uh, dynamic content, so YouTube video. So we're going to click on the page menu and click edit. The first thing we'll notice here is uh, there are a number of page layouts that we can utilize when building our SharePoint. Um, BI pages. The next thing we'll note is uh, over on the right here we have HTML, so we'll be spending some time in here customizing the look and feel for our SharePoint BI web pages. Edit the left frame and completely blow away uh, what we have in here. Likewise, I'm going to select the right frame edit HTML source and blow away that as well. Now I don't want a two column layout for this particular demonstration, I'm going to say one column. I'm going to insert a new web part. Now I can either select a content editor web part under media and content or I can select the HTML form web part to embed dynamic YouTube content. Okay. okay, for the HTML form web part, you can see it defaults, um, gives you some, I guess, sample form objects, um, so an input field and a go button. So we're going to edit that web part and under Source Editor we're going to blow away uh, what it's given us as a start. Okay, I'm 
going to go and get our embedded YouTube content. Going to paste that into the text editor. The next thing we're going to do is under appearance, we're going to remove the title for this web part because we want it to look uh, nice and clean. And so we don't want it to display the title. So we'll click OK. Save and close. So here we've created uh, a web page and we've embedded YouTube content. Now if we go ahead and play uh, this particular uh, YouTube content, we should hopefully see that play. Now there is a problem with uh, Internet Explorer 8 and YouTube content, so you may experience either uh, errors or the video may freeze up, uh, which is not a problem in Chrome. So the uh, solution to that, of course, is to uh, utilize IE9 and later. Okay, there we go. All right, we'll close that down to save my bandwidth. And just be aware of the issue with uh, IE8 and dynamic YouTube content. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do now is demonstrate how to embed uh, social media into our web pages. But first, we're going to edit that page and I'm going to delete that web part. And I'm going to go back to a two column uh, layer. And this is where you can utilize your HTML skills. So what I've prepared earlier is the HTML required for both frames. So on the left frame, I've prepared basic HTML. And I go to HTML, edit HTML source. And I blow away what's there. And I add my own HTML code. on the right frame. HTML, edit HTML source, I'm going to paste in my own HTML content. Save and close. Okay, so here we've started to customize the look and feel uh, of our web page by specifying the page layout and customising the content using basic um, HTML. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is utilise our site uh, assets. So we're going to implement a bunch of uh, other HTML uh, packs, I guess, to customise the look and feel to our SharePoint portal. We click on our main page, we click on Site Actions, Manage Infrastructure, and under our Analysis site, under Site Assets, we're going to add a number of um, code snippets that I prepared earlier that allow us to customise the look and feel um, in a few different ways, which I'll explain in a minute. 
So again, we can upload the document or we can go to our library and we can copy and paste using Windows Explorer. Files. And I'm going to paste that into my site assets library. We click browse. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is embed our social media into our web page. Now we're going to go through a few different techniques. The first is how to embed a Twitter widget. Uh, the next is how to display a follow me button. And the third is how to embed uh, Twitter content using a custom web part. We click on our page and edit. We go over to our right frame. And under Twitter, we're going to insert a content editor web part. Okay. So the first technique is to add a follow me button to our web page. If we jump back to our site assets, I'm going to show you how to link back to items in our site assets document library. So we need to open our site assets library. And we want this particular code snippet, a Twitter follow me button. Okay. So again, we want to add a content editor web part. And we're going to edit that web part. And we're going to paste a snippet. Again, we don't want the title uh, of this particular web part to show. So under the appearance property group, we're going to select none under Chrome type. We'll click OK. Save and close. So here we've added a Twitter follow me button to our web page. So the next thing I would like to do is show you how to embed Twitter content to a Twitter widget. Again, we're going to edit our page. This time we're going to go and pick up our Twitter widget snippet, manage content and structure. And there's our Twitter widget. Okay. We're going to add a second content editor web part. Add. We're going to edit that web part. We're going to paste in the link to our Twitter widget. Now the Twitter widget in this case is uh, the last couple of uh, tweets from my own uh, Twitter account. Now under appearance, again we want to hide the title of that content editor web part by selecting under Chrome type we'll specify none. And we'll click OK. Save and close. 
Now, this particular widget here, uh, I've created some search terms. And the search terms are for the words lemons and lemonade. So I've done that through my own Twitter uh, portal. And so Twitter has provided me with uh, the code snippet that I need to display uh, those search terms. Okay, so the third technique uh, that we will cover today is how to embed Twitter content using a third party uh, web part, and that is SPS display tweets from CodePlex. So the first thing we need to do is go and download uh, the custom web part from somewhere. Uh, now I have done that earlier. So let's just jump into our C drive. And I've been to CodePlex and I've downloaded this custom web part, which is a WSP file. The next thing I need to do is uh, make my SharePoint BI farm aware of that custom web part. And I need to specify the following uh, PowerShell command to add the WSP file into my SharePoint farm, which I've, which I've already done. The next step in adding a custom web part is we need to go into central administration. And under settings and farm management, we need to select Manage Farm Solutions. Now, as long as we've executed that uh, PowerShell command correctly, we should see our custom web part appear in here. And the status will be undeployed. Uh, if I click on that custom web part, we can see I've already deployed that solution to SharePoint. But if I don't like the, uh, the functionality of this particular custom web part, I can then remove that from SharePoint by saying retract solution. So let's jump back into our web page. Let's get rid of our second content editor web part. Let's go and add our new third party SPS display tweets web part and add dynamic Twitter content that way. Insert web part and let's go and look for our new web part. Okay, so I don't see anything there that looks like our third party web part. And that's because there's one more step that we need to do. We jump back to our main site, site actions, site settings. And under galleries, we select web parts. We select documents, new document. We can see uh, the two web parts uh, that are available here. We need to select those and then populate gallery. If we jump back to our web page, we insert web part, should find under miscellaneous a new third party web part called display tweets. So what we're going to do now is add dynamic content via a third party web part called display tweets. Now if we edit this uh, third party web part, the first thing we'll notice is there's a number of configuration properties that we need to configure. Now some of those will be uh, common configuration properties as we saw in uh, the content editor web part. We have an appearance, a property group and layout and advanced. Uh, but there's a number of custom uh, property groups that are included, included in this custom uh, web part. So the first thing we're going to do is switch off the title for this particular web part by setting the Chrome type to none. 
The next thing we need to do is go into the custom property group Twitter configuration. Now here I'm going to add the details for my particular Twitter app. Now Twitter apps allow a highly customized uh, development environment um, for you to present your Twitter experience to your customers. So in the most simple form I created a Twitter timeline which is my top five tweets. Uh, but there's a, a wide variety of uses for uh, Twitter apps. But all of them require you to create an app inside your Twitter account and specify the key and the secret. So I'm going to go and find which I can't remember. There we go. There's my Twitter key. And here is my Twitter secret. Now here I can customize uh, the number of tweets to display and a number of other uh, properties such as including um, retweets. There's a number, number of other uh, configuration uh, properties here but I'm going to click OK and get right into it. Click Browse, sorry, Page, Save and Close. So here we have a follow me button followed by hopefully the top five tweets including retweets. There we go. Okay, so here we've been able to embed uh, both uh, YouTube content. Uh, we've been able to edit our HTML page using basic HTML using a two column layer. And we've been able to embed Twitter content in three ways by using a follow me button, uh, a Twitter widget, which was uh, search terms for the words lemons and lemonade, and the top five tweets using a custom third party Twitter web part. So the next thing we're going to do is add our reporting services report and we're going to demonstrate how to use the reporting services web part, uh, how to make changes to that web part, and how to export that web part as a reusable item. We're going to go to site actions, site settings, sorry, manage content structure, and under our analysis subsite, we're going to go to site pages, documents, and we're going to select new document and specify the name of our new page. We're going to call it SSRS report usage by user. And here is our empty page. We're going to add a few different web parts here. The first is the content editor web part, which we're going to use um, as a hack to hide some of the content that we don't want in the left menu here. We're going to hide the recycle bin and all site content links. So we need one web part for each of those. And we need our reporting services web part. Okay. So we're going to pick up our widgets. the content and structure, site assets, 
we're going to pick up some of those reusable um, snippets that we uploaded earlier. So the first is hide all site content. Now I've lost my page, so we're going to go back and pick up our report of services page. Manage content and structure. Site pages. And there's our SSRS report usage by user. We're going to edit the page. Okay, looks like we've got a problem with that one. Let's get rid of that. Let's specify the page again. Let's add our two content editor web parts. And our reporting services web part. Okay, what I'm going to do now is save that. Okay, I'm going to go back and edit. Our content editor web part is a hack to hide the recycle bin uh, link on the left hand side. Now ordinarily we would use um, SharePoint Designer and a custom master page to achieve this. However, uh, the goal today was to implement customizations to the SharePoint UI uh, without using SharePoint Designer. So we'll edit the content editor web part and we'll provide the URL of our hide all site content uh, first. And under appearance, we would ordinarily hide the Chrome type, but in this instance we want to hide the entire web part. Now it's picked up that we have um, a site content, so it's automatically hiding our web part. The next thing we will do is hide the recycle button, uh, recycle bin. Okay. Find our reporting services page. Okay, click OK. Save and close. Now we're going to edit our reporting services web part. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is edit our reporting services web part and specify the location of our reporting services report. Now the purpose of this is, okay, now it looks like I have a problem with my reporting services, which has happened before. I'm going to just quickly check that my reporting services service has been started. So I'm going to go into my central administration. Okay, so I'm just going to stop and start. That. This doesn't usually happen, but Let me 
start it again. Okay, let's go back into our site. To site pages. Click on our reporting services report and edit. Let's see what's going on. Edit our web part and let's see and add our reporting services report. Okay. So here we want to, under appearance, we're going to hide the title by setting the Chrome type to none. And we can optionally adjust the pixels uh, that that particular reporting services web part takes up within our page. So we can specify uh, an automatic width and height, or we can actually override that by specifying the number of pixels. But what we're really trying to demonstrate here is uh, how to create a reporting services web part and publish that as a reusable item for other developers. We click OK. Save and close. Okay. Now if we scroll down here on the bottom left, you can see we've hidden uh, the recycle bin and all site con content buttons. Uh, however, I uh, have not uh, successfully hidden my content editor uh, titles there, so I can go back in and, and do that. But we're running it very close on time, so what I'm going to do quickly is just show you how to now export this web part so that we can reuse it in future without having to uh, customise those properties every time. So under our report viewer web part, we're going to select export. And SharePoint will ask us a number of questions which we select OK on every time. We're going to save our web part. And you'll note that it's a DWP file. Now let's delete this particular reporting services web part. We're going to insert new web part. We're going to upload our customised reporting services web part. We're going to look for our DWP file and upload. Okay, now we're going to insert a web part. You can see here under imported web parts, we'll find our customised reporting services web part. Now we haven't had to specify any of the properties such as the report or the appearance. I'll click save and close. Okay, so here we've been able to demonstrate uh, how to use uh, the reporting service web part, uh, how to use content editor web parts uh, to change the look and feel of what we're seeing in the site. So the um, uh, recycle bin and all site content uh, links. So we've been able to hide those using uh, hacks by the content editor web parts. And we've been able to customise the reporting services web part and publish that uh, back to our gallery where we can, uh, where, where other developers can reuse that particular web part. So finally, uh, the last very quick thing that I'll cover is uh, web analytics in SharePoint. 
So this particular report is showing us report executions by user, which is tapping into our uh, reporting services uh, report server database and tracking usage uh, for those particular reports. But there's quite a number of powerful uh, built-in reports within SharePoint that allow us to track who's following, uh, who's clicking on our web pages. So if you go to site actions and site settings, and here we have site web analytics reports. So here you can see uh, in the quick launch we have summary of a number of different built-in reports, a number of page views, uh, unique daily visitors, referrers, top pages, etc. So there's quite a bit of detailed uh, analytics uh, that are available to us within uh, standard SharePoint. Now if we're not getting any results here, it is likely that our web analytics is not turned on. So we can turn that on inside uh, central administration under monitoring and we can configure usage and health data collections. Here we can enable the usage data collection, uh, specify which events to log, and set a logging schedule, which is why my stats haven't been collecting because um, my virtual machine is not for long enough. Uh, so that concludes today's uh, webinar on how to customise your SharePoint BI portal. Um, using a number of built-in web parts and a custom web part. Excellent. That was a fantastic presentation, Peter. Um, just uh, before we go, would you mind um, maybe displaying your contact details in case uh, we have attendees who want to ask more questions later on? Sure, definitely. So uh, you can get me on uh, my email which is peter at popbi.com, P-O-P-B-I.com, or my Twitter page, which is popularbi. Excellent. Easy to remember. <laughs> so uh, we do have a question here from Carlos. Um, he's wondering if you can recommend a good book or books for learning how to create sites in SharePoint in a similar step-by-step -step fashion like you are like you have been showing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so there's a book called um, Beginning SharePoint 2010 Development. Um, that is fairly good. It uh, does go quite deep into SharePoint web parts, um, but it also covers some of the basics. Uh, so how to create um, brand new web parts. Um, but I probably think it's a little bit light on in terms of some of the, the hacks that I demonstrated today, so how to actually use um, code snippets inside your content editor web parts. Um, so I might actually get back to you on that one, Carlos. Okay, sure. Find something a little bit more appropriate. So. Yeah, that's fine. We, um, uh, we should be able to let you know Carlos's um, email address as well, so that should sure. be fine. And um, just a reminder to the attendees that we do record this presentation. We uh, have been having some issues with the um, the older presentations um, or older recordings. So I'm not quite sure when that's going to be fixed, but I'll just show you briefly. Uh, let me just change presenter to myself. Um, I'll just show you briefly where you can find a... Uh, where you can find the presentation. Let me just hold on a second.
So, um, so this is the presentation archive page of um, of our virtual chapter. So feel free to download the all the rec recordings. But unfortunately, we are actually having issues with um, with the recordings. For some reason, the links are not working. But we're still actively sorting that out. But um, other than that, thank you very much for. Um, for attending the session today. And um, as I've mentioned before, we do actually have two prizes to give away. One of them is a Surface Pro. Let me go back to my slide deck here again. Um, just a second. So we do have Surface Pro um, giveaway. So if you are interested um, in winning that, please send an email to pascwbifc.org with some um, with some comments on how we can improve our virtual chapter. And yes, um, thanks very much. Thank you very much, um, Peter. Okay. Um, hope you have a good day. Thank you. Thanks, Julie. All right. Thanks. Bye.